Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching electromagnetics at Idaho State University. I'm using the Ulibi textbook, which you may be using as well, but this is applicable to any magnetostatics introduction. So this is a quick introduction to magnetostatics, which is governed by these two equations. So let's get started. These two equations we call the first one, the Gauss's law for magnetism. And a interpretation of this, right, is that if you take the divergence of this vector, it's always equal to zero. So this is in contrast to our Gauss's law for um, electrostatics, or just Gauss's law, where if we took the divergence, we arrived at some number, and that number was a charge density. For magnetism, you take the divergence, it's equal to zero. So this is commonly interpreted as their being no existence of a magnetic particle. Then there is Ampere's law, and in Ampere's law, we have eliminated a time varying component by assuming that all d dt terms are equal to zero. And in this one, this is the curl of the flux is equal to a current, and this current is a constant current in magnetostatics. For most normal materials that we deal with, so when we're looking at properties, solving for boundary conditions, doing different problems, you often have materials like air, etc. And for most normal materials, we have this relationship between this vector B and this vector H, where B is the flux and H is the intensity. You have to study some exotic materials in order to make this invalid. For most undergraduate electromagnetics classes, including mine, we're always going to assume this is true. But if you go into studying something more complex, this may not be true. Now, throughout this, we're going to be dealing a lot with these two vectors. And this one is the magnetic flux density, whereas H is the magnetic field density. So as we saw in here, the flux density Right, this flux density right, may include some material knowledge, whereas this one may not. Now, this other little mu that we see is the permeability. The permeability, the total permeability is typically given uh, as the relative permeability multiplied by the constant permeability. For most material, like free space, air, vacuum, you will say that mu r is equal to 1. And this is pretty much like in the electrostatics where we said epsilon r is often equal to 1. The mu naught, this is a constant, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th henrys per meter. And it has a close relationship with the permittivity that's related to the speed of light. And this equation is shown down here. Okay, so like I said, we are often dealing with this permeability idea when we're dealing with different materials. And if you have a number like this one, this permalloy, this one might be an exotic material where you have a susceptibility that's 8,000. So for exotic materials like that, you're, you're going to have to break up that relationship between the flux density and the field intensity. However, we can see that most of these materials don't have a susceptibility listed. And so often you can just deal with that basic case where the relationship between the flux density and the field intensity is just based on this uh, relative permeability or permeability relationship. Now, when you look up tables of permeability, we can see that compared to the permittivity, the relative permeability can get much larger. I mean, just look at this iron, it's already six figures, things like this. Um, net glass is one million. When we looked at the a table of permittivity, these were often around one to 10 for most normal materials. So it's kind of interesting to note but the relative permeability can get a lot larger than the relative permittivity. Now this table uh, shows us a few relationships between various electrostatics and magnetostatics terms. So in electrostatics, we dealt with E and D, 
right, where this was the field and the flux. And in magnetostatics, we'll deal with H and B. In magnetostatics, we're going to be dealing with steady currents. So this is a current that's in a wire that's, that's not changing. It's not getting bigger or smaller. It's not, it's not something like A sine omega t. There's no time varying components, right? We're assuming that everything is steady and constant in magnetostatics. And then in magnetostatics, like I mentioned, we're going to be looking at this permeability quite often. The equations that we're going to be dealing with are these two, and I introduced them in the differential form. But just like in electrostatics, we could transform them into this integral form, and we'll work with that occasionally. In my class, we are not going to be dealing with the vector potential. We may look at this in some minor detail later, but it's important to note that we have an energy density for magnetostatics that is governed by this field intensity. And the force on a charge in a magnetic field is related to uh, speed, u, crossed with the field. Uh, in circuits, inductors are closely related to magnetostatics. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this introduction video is when we see this cross product, right, this means that we're going to start having to use this right hand rule. Uh, and this right hand rule is, is basically going to give us relationships between various things in the magnetic field that are perpendicular or normal to two different vectors. So in this case, right, we can see that the force and the velocity of a particle right, are going to act in this other direction that is normal to a plane that is made by the force and the velocity. Okay, and one last thing is that a total force on a charge, you could have both electric fields and magnetic fields, and you can combine those two forces together uh, to find the total force. So you can use superposition of the two different forces to determine it, and this may look like this. So I hope this helps you have a good idea about introduction to magnetostatics, and I'll see you in the next video.